what you're about to see, is absolutely true. And completely, verifiable. Through both public source documentation, as well as accepted, religious tomes. Full information, is available, here. What was in the skies over Jerusalem? And why did it stop over one of the most treasured sites in Christianity? And we've seen them in Mississippi like this, but never like never like Well, if you surf around online today, uh, and it probably will not be long before you come across footage of a UFO in the skies over Jerusalem. Now it is sparking intense debate on the internet. Trace Gallagher following this live from our West Coast News. So the question is, what was that UFO? What was it doing over Jerusalem? And, you know, is he back? Yeah, and that is the question, by the way, Megan, because, you know, critics, it's, it's difficult for them to dismiss this because there are so many different angles. We've got four different videos, all from various perspectives, uh, showing this light above the Dome on the Rock. In Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, of course, we know which is a holy site for both uh, Jews and Muslims. You see the shining ball of light, right? It's above there. It's kind of, well, they just froze it and I really can't see it now. But there it is right there. It's at the top of the screen. Yeah. It's up there and it hovers, kind of a pulsating orb. And then hold on here because this thing starts going down right toward, you see it there, going down toward the Dome of the Rock and the Temple Mount. And then it stops and it hovers there for a while. It kind of sits there and then all of a sudden it shoots straight back up into the air. Whoa. Now, experts say this would be kind of an indication this is an unmanned... There it is. You saw it That's right that. there. It shot straight back up in the air. Yeah. It's kind of hard to see, but it shot up in the air, and the experts think that, you know, it's an unmanned vehicle, they believe. It could be a drone, but they do not know of anything like this in the Israeli army. Um, so they say this is either incredible video or some very well-orchestrated hoax. Some have said maybe this is a movie... Uh, that's a, you know putting out this, this uh, I don't know, what do you put out, your movie, a trailer or some kind of a, a hoax to try and promote a movie that's yet to be named? We don't mm. know. Could mm. be Jacob's Ladder? Remember Jacob's Ladder? No, I don't watch scary films. They freak me out. Well, no, the, the biblical thing where Jacob's Ladder, you know, was the, the Jews and the Christians believe Jacob's Ladder, who he saw in a dream, leads from the Temple Mount. I thought that was a thriller that, that, that went very scary. That's what one of the producers said. Yeah. I saw that movie. No, I'm talking about the biblical. Okay. <laughs> All right, because uh, listen, I don't, I don't like to be scared. I, I just can't take it. It's, you know, I don't know what it is, but I, I don't like anything with torture, and I don't like to be scared. So that video, that doesn't make me feel either of those things, so we're okay. TG, thank we're you. We're going to follow up on it. You bet. What do you guys think? What was that? I mean, it's one thing we just come down, but then it goes back up. Mm -hmm. Kelly at foxnews.com.
let's take a moment to review the incredible events surrounding this miraculous fulfillment of prophecy. The Templars are known for guarding the greatest of all secrets, the truth of Christ our Lord. These secrets cost many Templars their lives, as they were hunted, persecuted, and murdered by the forces of the Catholic Church, all in order to suppress their holy knowledge. They knew approximately when the Christ would return, and through which family bloodline he would re-enter the world. And it became their mission to guard this lineage at all cost. Nearly a thousand years after their divine mission began, they successfully located the Christ. The line of David, in which Christ was born, came out of Jerusalem and found its way to Rome, and eventually to the United Kingdom, where it became the Collins bloodline. The line then went to the United States. When Jerusalem returned to Jewish control in 1967, this fulfilled the Great Tribulation of Matthew 24:21. Scripture tells us that Christ would return immediately following this Great Tribulation, and He did, on June 9, 1968, Orthodox Pentecost. The Bible tells us that this event would be accompanied by a rare astronomical event. Acts 2.20 The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Christ Rael's birth was during what NASA calls a tetrad cycle that contained four blood-red moons in a total solar eclipse. It was literally the only time Christ could return and accurately fulfill prophecy. In fact, everything about him fulfilled prophecy, from his name, to his astrology, to his famous heroic actions. Even the people surrounding him matched the original followers of Christ. There was no doubt that this was the returned Messiah. But just like the first time, it wouldn't be until adulthood that the Holy Spirit would descend again and join with him, and give him the fullness of his Christhood. The Bible tells us that as his spirit was carried into heaven by angels from the base of Mount Olive, so too would he return in the same way. January 28, 2011 The world watched the angels return the Holy Spirit of Christ to the base of Mount Olive. With Rael now carrying the Holy Spirit of Christ, the Son of Man had become the Son of God. As the Bible predicted, he would be accompanied by his angels. From that time forward, mass angel sightings from around the world have been reported. Before the Christ could reveal himself to the world, the Bible said the man of lawlessness had to be exposed, and the two witnesses had to testify. Between late 2010 and early 2011, radio and television talk show host Glenn Beck took to the airwaves and exposed George Soros as the puppet master of the New World Order saying that he collaborated with Nazis, overthrew governments, destroyed economies, and publicly declared himself God. 
the man of lawlessness was exposed. Two men came forward and made headlines around the world when they both predicted the same date that Christ would return, May 21st, 2011. These were the two witnesses. May 21st was in fact the day Christ Rael revealed himself to the world. But the Bible says one more thing must happen before Christ revealed himself. Rebellion. From January forward, a great international rebellion, the likes of which has never been seen, toppled multiple governments and presently there's no end in sight. The press has named it Arab Spring. So all of the prophecies regarding the return of our Lord have been fulfilled. On May 21st, 2011, the Christ, Lord Rael, addressed the world he warned that if we did not all come to him, he would demonstrate his power through a string of chastisements, starting with Christians in America. Immediately following his announcement, American Christians flooded the Internet with mockery, laughter, and blasphemies against Lord Rael. The following day, Lord Rael unleashed the most powerful string of tornadoes ever recorded onto America's Bible Belt. The area is called the Bible Belt because it contains the highest concentration of Christians in the United States. Lord Rael kept his word. But as expected, the people did not learn their lesson. He told the people that he would continue to shake their lands. Major earthquakes and aftershocks have been continuing at an unprecedented rate since his threat. The people still laughed, still rejected him. He said he would rain fire upon them. Suddenly and unexpectedly, volcanoes began erupting simultaneously around the world raining fire, lava, and ash down on the unrepentant people. Still they rejected him. He said he would darken our sun. And days later, respected scientists made befuddled press releases saying that the sun was suddenly going dark and they couldn't explain why. The people still rejected him. He said that the armies of heaven are fast approaching. Suddenly, UFO reports go off the charts. He said that his sun, a second sun, now rises. News reports, eyewitness reports, and videos from around the world began flooding the internet. A second sun was indeed being seen in the sky. Malachi 4.2 But on to you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise. As your space agencies already know, the armies of heaven are fast approaching. Yield to me now, and I shall restore peace and prosperity. Refuse, and I will rain fire from the sky. I will continue to shake your land, and I will darken your sun. Darken your sun, darken your sun, darken your sun, darken your sun, darken your sun.
The sun is going into a period of unusually low activity. The announcement comes from experts at the National Solar Observatory and the Air Force Research Laboratory. Well, forget well, everything you've heard here. about global warming. The real threat is a mini ice age. Sunspots could disappear for years or even decades. Frank Hill of the NSO calls it highly unusual and unexpected. Scientists are still trying to figure out what that would mean for the Earth's climate. But that. this is worse. This is actually a, a more dire problem, though, than, than, than the heating situation and the global warming. front row because we grow food when it's warm, and it's easier to take clothes off and cool things down when it's warm than it is to heat things up. It takes more energy. That's right. It Sunspot hibernation has happened before, mainly during the 17th century, when a so-called Little Ice Age occurred. And I can't understand how people don't look at that and say, well, wait a minute, we got to take a look at this thing. So I think it's ice rather than fire that's the big threat. Now For generations, this standard has protected We're following breaking news right now out of Washington, D.C., where a magnitude 5.3 earthquake has been felt in the D.C. area. The Pentagon has been evacuated. We were just talking to Senator Coons of Delaware, who, uh, like so many others right now, slightly shaken by the tremors that they felt. The senator uh, telling me live that the ground literally shook beneath them. Andrea Mitchell, as you also well know, would normally be live during this hour. She's now on the phone uh, as her show was interrupted as a result of this. Andrea, can you tell me what, what you're hearing and what was even felt at our D.C. bureau there? Cameron, I've never felt anything like this. We're all... It will take months, even years, for the stone spires to be brought back to its original condition. On the National Mall, the closed Washington Monument continued to attract visitors. Park police kept tourists a safe distance away. And how long the repair work is going to take. It's, it's impossible to give an exact date. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't want to get weird on this, so please take it for what it's worth. 
But it seems to me the Washington Monument is a symbol of America's power. It has been the symbol of our great nation. We look at that monument and we say this is one nation under God. Now there's a crack in it. There's a crack in it and it's closed up. Is that a sign from the Lord? And uh, we're just off the coast of uh, the Carolinas now, in the Outer Bank area. And uh, that's the direct direction we understand the storm is headed. Uh, it's got a ways to go. It's clear here. There's a few, a little bit of structure in the clouds, but not much. Uh, well, I take that back. There's thin stuff that's, uh, that's actually spiraling way out here. And Houston, uh, we're just talking here, and it, it's, it struck us. We're used to traveling a, a long ways in a short amount of time, but this storm is uh, stretching from Cuba to the uh, Carolinas, and that is uh, one one uh, scary big storm. Yeah, you bet, Mike. I mean, it was almost six minutes that you guys were directly over that thing, so that just gives us a little bit of the scale. It's pretty uh, pretty incredible. Have surpassed a record at 65 million people it seems that by estimates more people were hit by Hurricane Irene that have ever been hit by a single storm in the history of the United States Washington DC you'd think by now they'd get the message an earthquake a hurricane <laughs> are you listening <laughs> and now it's time for an act of God and we're getting it I saw a little tetrahedron. Exactly. On the official NASA stereo B footage of the interaction a few days ago. It looked like a floating pyramid. It was the night that you and I were supposed to be in the studio here in Albuquerque. That night, stereo B, which is one of these NASA solar spacecraft, took a sequence of video frames across millions of miles from Earth's orbit to about the orbit of Venus. That's the distance that Elanine was from the spacecraft that night, 23 million miles. And it photographed Elanine interacting with the solar wind, this spray of charged particles that's constantly blowing off the sun. And because of this ghostly impingement of this radiation in space around Elanine, suddenly a shape showed up, a geometric figure. Elanine appears to have a tetrahedrally shaped geometric, I mean, I can only call it a force field, which is interacting with the solar wind, with hydrogen and, uh, and free protons and electrons that basically recombine to cause it to light up, kind of like glowing when it hits this, this screen. That shape, that geometry, is incredibly recursive of the geometry embodied in the trajectory. All those 19.5 numbers are now embodied in the shape of the field around this thing itself, meaning it's not just a Bergy bit, it cannot just be a comet, it has to be an actual ship with generators and computers and control, meaning it could do anything from here on.
the so-called pyramid with the eye the eye is an inlay the stone is gray and white and you have 13 steps and it looks exactly like the pyramid with a shining eye on the one us dollar if you put this pyramid under black light the eye is shining very strongly and it looks really like an eye but not real like a human eye here you have a close-up of the eye and you can see the colors of the inlay. On the bottom of this pyramid you have the inlay in little gold plates showing the Orion star constellation and you have unknown writing. The translation of Professor Kurt Schildmann who was the president of the German Linguistic Association and he was perfect in more than 40 languages he was able to translate this writing. He called it pre-Sanskrit because it is older than the oldest writing. And the translation of these four letters you can see here. His translation is the son of the creator comes.
I do want to warn you that what you have seen thus far is but a wake-up call. I want you to prepare. Now, to other pressing matters. This is to both Israel and the United Nations. Do not divide my land. There is a Palestinian solution. It does not involve the reduction of Israel. Israel is to remain intact. If its borders are reduced, you shall know my anger. After days of diplomatic wrangling and decades of waiting, a formal application from the Palestinian state for membership of the United Nations. The letter handed over to the Secretary General by Mahmoud Abbas in his capacity as Chairman of the Palestine Liberation Organization. Then a resounding ovation as a Palestinian leader entered the General Assembly chamber. Applause echoed thousands of miles away in Ramallah where crowds had gathered to watch these momentous events in Palestinian history unfolding. And they heard a speech very different to those a notably reserved Mahmoud Abbas had given in the past. The tone that of an earlier era, before the so-called peace process got underway at Oslo. The Palestinian leader not merely asking for UN membership, but demanding it as a right.
a near real-time image of the sun, a boiling ball of plasma. And this, called active region 1302, is blasting away at Earth. The gun barrel is pointing right, right at the Earth uh, just about now. A massive burst of solar particles from this sunspot glanced off Earth yesterday creating unusually dramatic auroras like these seen from the space station a few days ago. Experts say Earth is now in the crosshairs as the revolving sun points AR-1302 our direction. Experts call it the solar storm that won't go away. We mostly talk about Earth's weather around here, but there is a massive storm happening on the sun right now. Our big illuminator already fired a giant gas ball right toward Earth. Luckily, the burst of radiation basically struck a glancing blow, but the danger is not over. Solar flares like this one could short-circuit satellites, interrupting television and Internet transmissions. They could also halt financial transactions, believe it or not. The flare could create giant power surges on Earth that would trigger blackouts over huge areas, and those are just some of the dangers. Let's bring in Michio Kaku. He is a physics professor at the City University of New York, also the author of the book Physics of the Future, and he knows just about everything. So the, <laughs> the solar flares, uh, we have seen them. Um, we've got pictures of them, thankfully, from NASA. We can't really predict when they're going to erupt? No, but... Them. Um, we've got pictures of them, thankfully, from NASA. We can't really predict when they're going to erupt? No, but we dodged the bullet. This past weekend, a gigantic solar flare just grazed by the Earth, lighting up the skies over southern England. They saw the northern lights light up because of the aurora borealis. And that sunspot on the sun is still shooting solar flares at the Earth. The sun is taking pot shots at the Earth. The, the sun does rotate just like the Earth does. And I guess we were lucky, you said it was a glancing blow. Glancing it basically blow. wasn't aimed at us, mm -hmm. but it is kind of spinning more toward us. That's right. There's a sunspot eight times bigger than the Earth, which just opened up just a few days ago. And it's erupting by shooting solar flares like a rifle pointed at more or less the direction of the Earth. But because of the Earth's spin and because of the sun's rotation, it was a glancing blow. Otherwise, all hell would have broken loose over this past weekend. Because, I mean, talked about power outages, that kind of thing, communications outages because of satellites get fried. We're talking about some potentially very disruptive problems. Here. That's right. Our satellites are not reinforced. Many power plants don't have shielding around them, so they would short circuit. Financial transactions you mentioned, credit card transactions, commerce would come to a halt if that thing had hit us just this mm. past weekend, and it's still firing away. As your space agencies already know, the armies of heaven are fast approaching. Yield to me now, and I shall restore peace and prosperity. Refuse, and I will rain fire from the sky. Peter Davenport, of course, is the director of the National UFO Reporting Center. Where do we stand with reports these days, Peter? Are they on the increase, decrease? Where are they? Yeah. I just, uh, not half an hour ago, sent an email to Rob Switek, who's one of the principals involved in the Fund for UFO Research. They're based in Maryland. He asked me the same question. He's preparing a talk, and he wanted a little data from me and from MUFON. I have never seen so many reports as I have seen over the last four or five months, George. I don't know what's happening. I rarely do, actually. 
All I do is take these reports, I proofread them, post them to our website, and try to make heads or tails out of what's going on. But June, July, and August of this year, I was just inundated with reports the likes of which I haven't seen in the 17 years that I've been doing this crazy job. Lamentable es que, como tú has señalado, eso ha provocado incendios forestales, ¿verdad? ¿Se está ya controlando? ¿Sabes alguna información sobre este tema? Sí, los incendios forestales se están dando en diferentes eh, zonas de, de la región Cusco. Y... Hey everyone, I was looking through the uh, meteor log um, on the internet and I just happened to notice that between September 1st and September 31st, it gives a one month time period here, it says that there were 516 reports of fireballs all over the country. We have, um, let's see, yesterday there was one, two, three, four, five, six reports of fireballs. Um, Alaska, California, New York, and then, and also New York, the day before, there were several of them. So I think um, it might be a good idea for us to check this out. <laughs> I thought this was pretty interesting. You know, I'm not sure if it means anything. Um, I've been kind of keeping track of um, the meteors. Uh, this month because I just figured that that would be something to look out for as well and um, but anyway I'll uh, share the link on this and let you guys have a look for yourselves all right thank you bye Hey, what's up, guys? It appears there's been something in the sky tonight all over the East Coast, north and south. I'm going to put a link below uh, reports of fireball entering the atmosphere, at least here in North and South Carolina and Georgia. And then up in Indiana and Ohio and other states, they're saying it's the northern lights that have stretched down into the south. And, but it looks like a meteor event here is a... Uh, Multiple eyewitness accounts, tons of people. Basically, if you were outside, you saw this. Fox News alert, new information now on the fate of the International Space Station. NASA just announcing astronauts may need to evacuate the space outpost uh, in the next few weeks. Trace Gallagher following the latest developments live from our breaking news desk. Trace. So imagine, Megan, for the first time ever, the International Space Station could be unmanned. There's nobody up there to run the thing.
people have been recording strange noises like this one in Kiev for some time now. Videos filmed all over the world have appeared on YouTube, the first in summer last year. But no one's really sure what they're hearing. There's been a lot of buzz over the last few weeks about strange sounds being heard in the atmosphere. People around the world and here at home have reported hearing some bizarre noises. The latest were recorded in the Battlefords last weekend. John Baglieri has more on the strange occurrence that could have a very logical explanation. It came in many forms last Sunday night. To some, it sounded like trumpets. To others, a mariner's horn. Yeah. North Battleford's mayor says he can't explain it. What I was hearing was what I experienced as a possibly a scraping. Mike Halstead was lying in bed when his phone rang. Calls and text messages came in from his friends saying they too had similar experiences. That's when the goosebumps got me and I, I kind of thought, yeah, it's awfully strange. Hey, 93.3 The Rock. The next day, the local radio station The Rock got flooded with over 40 calls and Facebook messages, each person wanting to know what that sound was last night. I don't think I've ever had a response that big about something. And it's interesting, right? Human nature, people just want to know what the sounds are. It's now days later, and the city is still abuzz with talk about the sounds. Everybody with their own guess, estimation, or explanation as to where they came from. I've heard that uh, Jesus is coming back. I've heard that it's 2012, the world is ending. This phenomenon stretched beyond North Battleford. Similar experiences were reported in Saskatoon, northern Saskatchewan, and parts of the U.S., even in Europe. U of S professor Jean-Pierre Saint-Marie says there is a natural explanation. Somehow they're picking up noise from an environmental antenna that happens to be there. That is electromagnetic noise. Nice natural noise, but really, actually, it's not a noise. It's electromagnetic waves are emitted from the aurora above our head or emitted uh, from the radiation belts a bit more to the south. Murray says it's normal and there's nothing to worry about. Whether a scientific explanation will satisfy all those people who say they heard something they can't explain is up in the air. John Baglieri, CTV News, North yeah. Battlefield.
Fox Talk tonight. Boy, wrap your head around this. UFO sightings are skyrocketing in 2012, and we're barely two weeks in. Eyewitnesses reporting strange things in 36 out of the 50 states, and yeah, Florida's included. We are joined on the phone right now, Peter Davenport from the, uh, he's the director of the UFO Center there in uh, Washington. Peter, uh, let me tell you something, everybody's got a, a cell phone camera these days. I'm imagining if you have a lot of sightings, you're getting some pretty good pictures. Well, we get some pictures, but the overwhelming majority of them are of low quality, as you say, from those cell phones. What we encourage people to do if they see what they think may be a UFO is try to get a good camera, stabilize the camera no matter what they're using, and try to get a good still photo of it. Peter, why do you think you're getting so many this early in the year? Is it because it's 2012 and you got everybody going, oh, it's the Mayan calendar? Uh, I'm not one of those who believes that there's anything special about 2012, Bob, uh -huh. but I just, just before this program I reviewed our database. We took 110 reports on New Year's Eve, 13 of them are from Florida, and uh, something is going on. I mm -hmm. think it's picked up dramatically, the number of reports we're receiving, but what it means, I have no idea. The year 2012 corresponds to the Hebrew date 8 Tavshin Ein Bet, which is 5,772 years after creation. In Bible code, we found this date in the following place. You can see Bet in A5000, Tav 400, Shin 372. So we have here the date for. Here we can see clearly to show you it is B in 5,472 years, and then the continuation is Mazal, the zodiac of uh, as of the Capricorn. So we have only once in Bible, because in the Torah, this sentence. So So we know about Passover, Passover, which is Pesach, appearing here, which is a date for redemption for the Jewish people. And this comes out a few times in this Bible code. You see Pesach again, Passover, coming here also. And we have here the Hebrew word, a Geula. Geula, you have here, Gimal, Aleph, Vav, Lamed, A, redemption. Clearly indication in the Bible code that this year of 5,772, which is 2012, is destined, according to Jewish tradition, to a full redemption. And the connection between the Capricorn as the night where it's going to happen, according to our rabbis, it will be exactly when the zodiac of Capricorn will rule. It will be on Thursday, Pesach night, and this is the time when Jews came out of Egypt in the past.
is this night in the middle of it, and the next night is kept for the future redemption, which is 2012, 5,772. Now you can see this in the Bible code. Again, I show you here. You can see all these details. You can see here Be A Taf Shin Ein Bet in 5,772. And then on Pesach, and also you see Elijah, who is a Redeemer, comes here with Pesach together. Eliyahu in Hebrew, Elijah next to Pesach, indicating to us that this is for Jews very, very important time when it's destined for Messiah to come. And here you find Messiah, the Hebrew word Mashiach in Hebrew, Mashiach comes here, here. You surf around online today, uh, and it probably will not be long before you come across footage of a UFO in the skies over Jerusalem. Now it is sparking intense debate on the Internet. Trace Gallagher following this live from our West Coast News. So the question is, what was that UFO? What was it doing over Jerusalem? And, you know, is he back? Yeah, and that is the question. I shall remove all evil from the kingdom, and those of my choosing will reign with me in peace and love forever. My Father's breath is already upon you. As never before, you are feeling your lands move, the water rising, in the gust of his nostrils laying waste to your embankments, he will be here soon. But first, I shall judge the nations. I shall decide who will be spared. There is no defense for what is coming. Your armies will die. Your navies sink. Your aerial forces will crash and burn. Your siege walls, your ramparts, will fall as if they were constructed with ether. And worse, those that take up arms against us will burn for their transgressions. If you've been given to lead men, to lead a nation, bend your knee now, beg forgiveness and mercy for yourself and for those you lead. Swear fidelity to the crown, and perhaps mercy will be granted. 
or simply wait for my father's arrival. It be blotted out as if you and your people and your lands never existed. The choice is yours, and it may very well be your last. And to my faithful children, you are why I have returned. You are the reason I have left the bliss of my Father's heaven, to establish a new and everlasting heaven for you. I am pleased that you have kept the faith this long. It has not been easy, I know. Those of you who profess obedience to me, who call yourself Christian, I challenge your logic. How have you demonstrated my love by accusing people, burning them, torturing them, judging them. What is most regrettable is the fact that you completely underestimate your adversary. That is why you have been tricked into worshipping those who murdered your Lord. That is also why you have done such despicable things in the name of God. So many of you have sworn to me to abide in me and my teachings, and yet you have not. You have wasted, tarnished my blessings and my sacrifice for you. I suffered greatly to give you life, and in repayment you kill in my name for my cause? I think not. Mine is the cause of justice, and for that sake I will return to you in measure that which you have done for me. Prepare yourselves. Come to me if you seek genuine forgiveness. If your heart is heavy with guilt, with true repentance, and not simply fear, come to me. You may seek protection under my wings. But know this, the price of life is high. You will have to give up all that is of this world, for my kingdom is not what you see before you. Mine is a kingdom of truth, of light, of everlasting life and everlasting love. It is reserved for those with an enlightened mind and a noble heart, and only those I deem worthy shall walk its boulevards. As your space agencies already know, the armies of heaven are fast approaching. Yield to me now, and I shall restore peace and prosperity. Refuse, and I will rain fire from the sky. I will continue to shake your land, and I will darken your sun. My wrath is great. But my love, oh, my love is far greater. Choose wisely.
an unholy fury of tornadoes, at least 16 of them, one after the other, tearing through Midwestern towns today. On our broadcast tonight, the devastation across seven states, entire neighborhoods destroyed in that violent outbreak of storms. At least 27 tornadoes in all. And tonight, the forecast is looking grim again. The wall of monster tornadoes is tearing across this nation, 37 million Americans in their path. Four states are under the highest possible alert, and this is why. Terrifying scenes on the ground, the view from a car window in Indiana. Tonight on Nightly News, state of emergency on the ground here in Indiana and across the tornado zone. Dozens are dead, entire towns destroyed. Small country town in Indiana, and it is, as you can see, virtually gone. Virtually every house in this community is like this. If it is standing, it is certainly not inhabitable. And you mentioned the EF4 category rating. That means winds of 175 miles per hour across this path. It is nothing but destruction. Good evening. Tonight, a U.S. senator from Indiana said they'd appreciate the prayers of everyone watching television tonight. We are in the midst of covering a massive outbreak of severe weather this evening, the likes of which we're not sure we've ever seen before. 155 million Americans have been in the path of severe weather today and remain so tonight. We've had tornadoes in eight states so far. At one point this evening, as we said, there were 19 separate tornado warnings. They are all over the map in the southeast, including some major cities, including some smaller towns that are frankly no longer standing. At the heart of some of these storms is some of the strongest weather this planet can produce. Weather Channel meteorologist Jim Cantori is on the ground in Henryville, Indiana, the scene of some of the worst damage we have seen all day. Jim, are you with us? Yeah, good evening, Brian. We just kind of rolled in here and pulled off uh, away from all the emergency vehicles. There's just an entourage of those coming in right now here into Henryville, Indiana. Just a massive tornado. I mean, take a look at some of these pictures. We understand that nine people so far have lost their lives. They expect that death toll to climb as they are just beginning a massive search and rescue effort over four counties this evening. But look at the kind of damage. Homes completely destroyed. School buses. Thank goodness no kids were in those buses at the time. They were wrapped into the sides of, uh, of buildings and, and even the school here, the elementary school behind me, sustaining major damage. At one point, a young child saw the funnel cloud told the bus driver as they were going home, the bus driver turned around, came back to this school. They took shelter in it, even though the tornado had wrecked it quite a bit. They were all fine and are all accounted for this evening. So what a wild ride for those kids. Certainly something they'll never forget, but a very good and positive ending. That's not going to be the case, though, for so many here. We've got dozens of injuries. We've got emergency vehicles just lining the streets out and through here. As This is really just a breaking story. We watched this tornado develop, push across all of southern Indiana, in through northern Kentucky, almost into West Virginia. And then eerily, right behind that, another tornado developed and almost followed the same track. So if it's like if the first one didn't hit you, the second one was coming right in. But what's amazing about this outbreak is it's covered so many states in the month of March, and it probably will go down as one of the strongest outbreaks ever. We could easily have, by time it's all said and done, a month's worth of tornadoes, which is 87 on average, in just one day. An amazing storm. By 3.40 p.m., reports of extreme devastation in parts of Indiana. After being pummeled by hail, tornadoes battered large areas of the state. Several towns, as one official put it, are completely gone. Indiana's governor described the damage as incomprehensible. All the things that mere mortals can do aren't enough uh, sometimes. Oh my gosh. Across America's midsection, more than 100 tornadoes on Friday, from the Gulf states to the Great Lakes, as a third of the country, a third of the country, a third of the country spent the day trying to recover from a day of devastation and heartbreak. My friend, you've been with KFES for a long time. Describe this storm as all the storms you've reported on over these years. This is really something. Well, like I said, Lauren, I mean, this looks exactly like the scene from Galesburg, Kansas, from Joplin, Missouri, from 
you know, Alabama, where you've got just nothing left but foundations of buildings and then just piles and piles of debris. It is reminiscent of Joplin. I, I hate to say it. They are powerful. The tornado that ripped through Branson, Missouri, was on the ground for 22 miles. The twister that flattened nearly 300 homes in Harrisburg, Illinois, authorities now believe it was an EF4 tornado, nearly 200 yards wide, with winds near 170 miles an hour. The path of destruction is historic in its width, with storms reported as far south as Georgia and as far north as Illinois. The frantic search for survivors with states of emergency in effect in a large swath of America this morning after a swarm of tornadoes, nearly a hundred of them. Once thriving neighborhoods, now debris fields, lives literally uprooted in seconds. Big semi-trucks on top of what was the gas station. This tornado went 52 miles from Holland, Indiana, all the way into Ohio. New video of that massive twister as it careened toward this small town. We now know it was a powerful EF4, packing winds of 175 miles per hour. Yellow school buses tossed everywhere. Yellow school buses tossed everywhere. Yellow school buses tossed everywhere. This monster system took aim at Indiana. So why did this happen? It is not rare to see tornadoes this time of year, but to see an outbreak of this magnitude certainly is, and it is not over. A string of violent, severe storms and tornadoes killed dozens of people in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana on Friday. I gotta go find my mom. You're looking for your mom? My mom, my sister, my brother, my nephew, my dad. The early season tornado outbreak followed a line Friday from the Gulf Coast to the Ohio Valley. What we know is, is we've got complete destruction. We've got complete destruction. We've got complete destruction. What you are seeing here is a map put out by the National Weather Service, which shows where the 90 tornadoes hit Friday and Saturday. 38 people now dead in five states by the latest count, and unbelievable 27 and a half million people were put at risk by the storm. The storms in Kentucky, the worst in 24 years, and in Indiana, the town of Henryville was hit by a twister packing 175 mile an hour winds, and it stayed on the ground for more than 50 miles. Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels was in Henryville and in other parts of his hard hit state yesterday. Uh, he is with us this morning from Indianapolis. Uh, Governor, thank you for finding time to talk to us this the morning. The count of those uh, who are, have lost homes and, uh, and businesses is smaller than it might have been just based on where these incredibly powerful storms hit, but um, it doesn't ease the heartache. Uh, if there was any mercy in this uh, incredibly brutal uh, set of storms, it, it is that it, it didn't hit more populous areas. Uh, but uh, again, in the frame of reference of towns, uh, the, the kind of towns that got damaged in our state uh, means everything. And so um, once again, uh, you can't really measure the uh, uh, the sense of loss. I, I noticed some of these towns, like Henryville, just wiped out. I mean, they weren't just hit hard; they they were they were wiped out. Have you ever seen anything quite like this? Uh, I've had way more practice than I wish I had uh, in uh, severe weather and severe storms over these last seven plus years. But just from an educated amateur standpoint, I've never seen one quite this destructive. Um, the uh, the continuity of the storm as you as you. Uh, followed its path. Uh, this one didn't, as far as I could tell, pick up and come down very often. It just uh, moved like a lawnmower uh, through some of the most beautiful countryside and some of the 
most beautiful uh, towns that, that we have. So uh, uh, I'll leave to the experts what, uh, what number to put on it. I'll just tell you that I haven't seen worse. Are you prepared? Uh, what are you going to do to be ready for the, for the next round? Because there may well be one. If, uh, if you needed another way to keep your human pride under control, these storms uh, provided it. That same official tells me in his 25 years of work, he has seen nothing like this. This is the worst damage he's ever seen, and he compared it to a war zone. And we are just now learning just how bad western Kentucky was hit. The death toll there has risen to 20, and a state of emergency is in effect. The National Guard's been called in as well, as Kentucky's governor says the hardest hit areas look like a bomb went off. Survivors all describing it the same way. War zone. War zone. Yeah. It looks like we were bombed. Um, yeah, it, it looks like a war zone. It looks like somebody's come through and uh, it's just, just flattened. Last night, while we were on the air covering Super Tuesday, there was a storm on the surface of the sun. And that energy, those waves, are traveling toward us at over 4 million miles an hour right now, which means it could arrive as early as between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. Eastern Time tonight. It could affect a lot of things. Past storms like this have knocked out power grids here on Earth, attacked communications and GPS, and already some commercial airlines have rerouted flights to avoid interference from it. Tom, good evening. Hi, Brian. I've been on the phone with the folks at NOAA in Boulder, Colorado, and in simple terms, the atmosphere around the sun has been blown away, leaving charged particles in a magnetic field which are now speeding towards the Earth, as you said, 4 million miles an hour. Planet Earth is wrapped in a kind of cosmic electric blanket surrounded by solar flares ten times more powerful than anything we've seen in years. The flares bombard the Earth's magnetic field. In fact, some airplanes had to make detours in order to steer clear. And the nation's top scientists are monitoring the power grids. ABC's Sam Champion has been tracking this all day and tells us what those scientists are seeing so far. These are the eruptions on the surface of the sun. Solar flares more than 500,000 miles high and 10 million times more powerful than a volcanic eruption that sent today's solar storm barreling down to Earth. 
setting off a white knuckle watch for trouble. Inside the nation's mission control for space weather, all eyes were tracking the storm around the clock, looking for impact and watching closely for any new flare-ups on the very active surface of the sun. And this region really hasn't shown any signs of, of decay or, or diminishing, so the, the threat is still there. And breaking news, deadly heat, the record-breaking wave of extreme weather, violent storms blamed for at least 17 deaths. Oh, oh my God! Trees falling on homes and cars, millions without power right now. But we begin with the heat wave that's burning up so much of the country, 16 states under heat warnings or advisories this morning, and adding to the scorcher, millions without power. Our extreme weather team has been tracking every angle. Red dots are the warmest temperatures ever in cities. Folks, this has never happened before. Red dots are the warmest temperatures ever in cities. Folks, this has never happened before. Red dots are the warmest temperatures ever in cities. Folks, this has never happened happened before. Nashville, Tennessee, 109 degrees. Atlanta, Georgia, 106. Look at Raleigh at 105. We were on pace with the temperatures that were in Saudi Arabia and deserts all over the country with some of the hottest temperatures in the world. Hottest temperatures in the world. Hottest temperatures in the world. Now with that heat came an awful lot of storms. About a thousand storms kicked off in Friday. And then we had 800 yesterday. About a thousand storms kicked off in Friday. And then we had 800 yesterday. Our ginger Z is in Arlington. We're ginger right where you you are my family, part of the millions of folks who spent the weekend without power this morning. Good morning, Ginger. 
Good morning, Sam, and good morning, everyone. This is one of so many neighborhoods, not only in Virginia, where you see trees and the power lines, a virtual minefield in the streets, but anywhere from the Carolinas to Ohio. They had round after round of severe storms, and now the extreme heat. Powerful winds up to 90 miles per hour blew through Chicago late Sunday. It came with teeming rain and hail. The storms dropped Chicago's temperature by 20 degrees quick, but did little to cool off the rest of the country, still sweating it out. This morning, at least 3 million homes are without power across seven states. At least 3 million homes are without power across seven states. At least 3 million homes are without power across seven states. At least 14 confirmed dead, all after this powerful line of storms blew through from the Midwest to the Mid-Atlantic Friday. Oh, oh my God! These storms so widespread that some folks are not going to get power back until Friday. That would put them at day seven with no electricity. And you saw Sam's forecast, Josh. This is not good. Yeah, it's hard to believe. The stunning headline, the worst blackout in the history of the planet. More than 600 million people across India. Think of it this way. It's as if the entire population of North and Central America combined was thrown into the dark. The countryside is burning up. It is official now. It is the worst drought in a quarter century. And we're in it, and it's causing great damage to staple products people all over the world depend on from the U.S., like corn, say nothing of livestock and property. heartland has been hit hard by the worst drought on record.
first, we want to take you right away to the Gulf Coast. At this moment, Isaac unleashing a deluge of water, a torrent of water out of Louisiana. And this is the seventh anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. And this is the seventh anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. This is the seventh anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Once again, we are seeing in some neighborhoods, families being rescued from their homes, from their roofs. And take a look at the pictures still coming in. Houses underwater, boats and helicopters trying to help families flee for safety. On the seventh anniversary of Katrina, it was another day of rooftop rescues. We had a right through the ceiling and come through the attic. And they took us out of the attic into the boat. It's very bad down there, very bad. I lived in Breakway for 53 years, and this is my first time seeing something like this. This ain't never, ever happened to us. We never seen anything like this, not even Katrina. We never seen anything like this, not even Katrina. We never seen anything like this, not even Katrina. Huge storms are tearing through the Northeast tonight. Here is a picture taken just a little while ago from 10,000 feet in the air, Manhattan, under a massive mountain of hail, thunder, lightning. And lightning strikes thousands of them at radar sites per hour. Now remember, these are high temperatures today. There were 101 at LaGuardia, 104 in Newark, Baltimore, 107 degrees. And we're breaking this heat with this long line of powerful storms. There will be pictures in the news to show trees down, power out, all of those things that come with these storms. Not used to seeing it over the skyline of Manhattan. Thank you, Sam. Nearly 40 million Americans are scanning the skies, wondering what the night will bring. High winds, tornadoes, and wicked weather across a massive swath of the country right now. A line of storms stretching more than 1,600 miles. A line of storms stretching more than 1,600 miles. A line of storms stretching more than 1,600 miles. Just look at this map. Outbreaks from Tulsa to the tip of Massachusetts and reports pouring in. Twisters touching down, tens of thousands of lightning strikes. The sky lit with destructive potential. ABC's meteorologist Ginger Z is tracking it all for us. And Ginger, what are you seeing? Well, tonight, the biggest threat is what I have to take you straight to. We're going to start with a map that shows you the watches and tornado watches and severe thunderstorm watches that everyone is seeing. So if you are in this area, you've got a chance of seeing at least 60 to 80 mile per hour winds, large hail, and we're already getting reports in of tornadoes. Bottom line, we're in the thick of it as this summer of extremes continues. Across the nation, the heat is twisting rail lines and buckling roads. And with all these dangers, it's still too dry. A phrase echoed from coast to coast. Almost every state now has some level of drought. Twelve states are bracing for yet another night of powerful storms. Lightning, hail, and high winds. And this after last night's destruction. These snapshots you see tell the tale. An almost impossibly large storm cloud consumes the horizon. America virtually under siege by Mother Nature. America virtually under siege by Mother Nature. America virtually under siege by Mother Nature. New alarm tonight from the CDC about an outbreak of the West Nile virus, more widespread than they have ever seen before. More widespread than they have ever seen before. More widespread than they have ever seen before. The virus has now been detected in 43 states. It is carried by mosquitoes. So what is the first sign that you're in trouble? Here's ABC's Ryan Owens from Dallas, where they've declared a state of emergency tonight.
Residents in China's southwestern megacity of Chongqing have been puzzled by this strange sight this week. These images of the Yangtze River, the longest in China, have been surfacing since Wednesday. This stretch of the river around Chongqing looks like it's been dyed blood red.